My guest on the program is architect Kabir Ibrahim, the president of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria. Being a farmer himself, he knows firsthand what the challenges are. According to him, farmers are a priority for the Buhari administration. However, rising food costs, middlemen, insecurity, climate change, and the need to resuscitate the National Food Reserve Agency are crucial for agricultural growth. Akita Kabir, welcome to Date and Abuja. Thank you very much. Okay, so the Nigerian person who's listening to this program or has been listening to the news in the past few months has been hearing things like inflation, cost of food just keeps going up. All he knows is that when I go to the market and I'm trying to buy things to eat, it costs me a lot more than it did some time back. What is the real state of food production in the country? Just so, just so the Nigerian can understand what's going on. Well, there are many threats to food production. Over the last uh, one and a half years, COVID-19 is a very real and serious threat to everything in life. We have a new normal. You know, in the beginning, when COVID was new, the farmers could not even be allowed to take anything out from the city to the farm. We had to plead. Mr. President saw it, saw things our way and allowed a task force to be set. And then we were able to go to the farms. Now, in the northeast, there was Boko Haram. Everybody thought it was only Boko Haram. But you see now in the northwest, we have a lot of banditry kidnapping and people are being chased from their farms. People cannot go to their farms. Now, unless you go to the farm, you cannot produce sufficiently to feed the 200 million mouths in Nigeria today. So there are many, many threats. And then, of course, we had flooding. And then we have had problems that we, are, we have been living with. We, don't, we, don't have, we have very low mechanization. This year, the farmers did not have fertilizer as we had last year from the presidential uh, fertilizer initiative. So many of these things compounded the issue of production. Now, when you go to the rising prices of everything in Nigeria, there are also many reasons why this should happen. Not only food, many other things, are, they have the same fate because our Naira, the purchasing power of our Naira is dwindling. Everybody knows the exchange rate now in the black market is five, 580 or so. In the bank is about 531 or so thereabout. So these are all the reasons that uh, probably compound this issue. But the farmers, you know, are working seriously to make sure that we attain food security at some point. But our major challenges are security. The insecurity is so bad that people go to the farms and they are, nobody says they are there until he or she sees them. Is Nigeria facing a food crisis from a farmer's uh, perspective? Uh, I wouldn't say yeah, no. I, I say no. We are not yet uh, facing a crisis as such. So, so what, what, are the, what are the things, what are the indices we can use to know if we're facing a food crisis or not? When people are clearly malnourished, when you see children looking very skinny, and people like you, instead of eating three meals, you eat one, things like that. These things are happening already. They're just not caught on camera. What I will tell you now is there is food, but it is costly. Now there is food, but it is costly. A food crisis would mean that there's no food at all? They, that's what it means. You have your money, but you can't get the food. That is when you really have a crisis. But the food system globally is being challenged. If you notice, on the 23rd of September, the UN formally launched the Food System Dialogue or Summit. This is global because... If you go to the United States or even the UK, you see people lining up, uh, you know, in food banks, trying to get food and all that. Mm. We don't have food banks in Nigeria. That's why you don't have these lines. But uh, nobody is saying that there is a food crisis in the UK, for instance. There are some problems in the food system. But this is global. It's not only Nigeria. The situation in rural areas... You know, it's interesting. Whenever I meet farmers, I always want to tell them something I used to hear when I was growing up, and that is that Nigeria is a farm country. 
Well, we, is, we this, have, is this is this true? No. Are the bulk of the people in the rural areas in Nigeria, are, they, are the bulk of them farmers? Because that's what I grew up hearing, yeah, that we are a farming country. That's true. The, you see, I'm happy that you identified farming with rural. It's because farming takes place in the rural areas. It, 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 farming doesn't take place in Abuja. In urban instance. centers, yeah. So uh, people who move around here with their briefcases and say they are farmers, they are not farmers. No, the farmers are rural, in the states, are in the it's villages. It's a rural activity. Yes. Even the in attention. England, you go to rural England, that's where the farming is. Even in the U.S. Yeah, well, even the U.S. Is the government giving it the kind of attention it needs? Because we just mentioned the U.K. and the U.S. The government is... In governments in those countries are very, very serious about their farming communities. No, may, maybe, even policy-wise, policy-wise, making things available to ensure that these clusters of farmers are able to, you know, bring the best and they're able to export what the country is going to earn from. Do we have that same kind of attention given to farmers in Nigeria? Hitherto, we had policy somersaults. You know, there would be policy today. If another administration comes in, it just changes it. Well, that's the bane of the progress in agriculture. A lot of money has been put on so many things. We have had so many projects. We have had so many things. And they are institutionalized. It is only recently that we have certain things happening that are not yet institutionalized. I will give you real examples. Even the intervention of the CBN is not institutionalized. It depends on the whims and caprices of the man at the top. It, was, it was a response, basically, yeah, to, to yes. a crisis situation. Uh, not a crisis situation. I think an agenda. This government thought it would make agriculture the alternative to oil. That's why they came up with agriculture promotion policy. They called it green alternative. When it was launched, the CBN keyed into it, and we, I was in the entourage that escorted the president to launch it formally, the Uncle Broa program in Kebi, with 2.6 billion. And then, of course, the rest is history, it's several billions down the line. But it is not yet institutionalized. It should be put in a place where agriculture is run. You know, not where you do these things in uh, ad hoc. There are many other windows that have been opened now. All we need to do is to be able to synergize among all those, and then we will get there. Now, as far as Nigeria is concerned now, during this period, during this uh, Buhari period or regime or administration, agriculture has, is in the front banner. There is a lot of money that has been put in agriculture. And a lot of people are interested in farming. Young people like you are continuously calling me, wanting to join our association and become farmers. So what we need to do is to harness what is there now and work assiduously to feed our growing population. Because the population is increasing, and by about 2050 will be almost 400 million. So now we are 200 million and you are alluding to a crisis. What will happen when we get to that number? So we have to work seriously. We need to mechanize. We need to do a lot of research. You, you mentioned uh, drought resistant, and uh, flood resistant and uh, some insect resistant uh, seeds. G some of them GMOs, some of them just hybrid and all that. We need to work and put the research findings in practice to be able to really get to food security proper so that we will have it sustainably. Because food security is not uh, a stopgap thing. It's supposed to be there for all time. That's why you, people are able to think outside the box Go to the moon, for instance. If, you don't, if your stomach is not filled up, you can't think in terms of going out of your house. So this is what we, 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 we hope for. Akita Kabiru, thank you so much for being with us on Dateline Abuja, and good luck with all that you do. You are welcome. Thank you very much, too.